So is it just those um, issues that you get or does the, does the, the symptoms ban beyond? <laughs> The symptom spread is actually quite wide and you can kind of classify it's like there's so the impacts can are first off kind of at a biological level. So even if you're not experiencing symptoms, you know, there's a lot of evidence that your different exposures to different types of EMF pollution is causing changes at a, at a cellular level mm -hmm. and causing certain things at a physiological level. So affecting things like melatonin production. And as we know, melatonin is super important for sleep, but it's also a very powerful antioxidant accident or kind of cancer fighter. So lowered melatonin, it, you know, can create all kinds of problems with circadian rhythms, and also our ability to kind of stave off cancer or, you know, things like that. Um, DNA damage, um, oxidative stress, I mean, all, a lot of the inflammation. So a lot of those kind of precursors to disease, you know, can be caused by EMF exposure, like they can be caused by other environmental toxins. And then you tend to have a cascading effect. So you can have stuff happening at a biological level. And sometimes that's going to manifest in a kind of like an immediate or a short term or symptom that you'll notice over time. Those can be things like headaches, dizziness, a sensation of brain fog, sometimes like a prickly or tingling sensation in your skin. Tinnitus is a big one. Um, difficulty sleeping is a really big one. Um, all kinds of um, sometimes even like allergy type symptoms. So, uh, you know, congestion, um, difficulty with focus and concentration. So some of those kind of ADD, ADHD like symptoms can be some of the shorter term manifestations and then exposures over a long period of time What the research epidemiologically is beginning to show is things like cancer connections to potential Alzheimer's, um, autism, heart issues, arrhythmias, um, ALS, all kinds of like neurological type issues, as well as autoimmune issues. So it's interesting because my, well, now ex-husband did a lot of research into kind of looking at disease and disease states and what, where the growth has been over the last 30 years. And so it wasn't always just the, you know, what you would expect in terms of like cancers and things like that, but the autoimmune disease, the neurological things, you know, like the Alzheimer's, like the MS, you know, um, all of that was kind of like skyrocketing. Incidences were, you know, growing a lot. And it's interesting because one of the, you know, correlative factors is, you know, that growth has happened in the same time that we've seen this huge acceleration in just our use of electronics, and especially wireless technologies. So it's all happened at the same time. So we're kind of like living in this fog or soup. You know, sometimes I wish it was possible because I think we'd all be really surprised if we could, the problem with this type of pollution is it's invisible. You can't smell it, you can't see it. Some people can actually, you know, hear it. But for the most part, it's kind of an invisible pollutant. So you don't have like those reminders like you do with a, you know, a smokestack at a factory where you're looking at th that thinking, that's probably not that great for me. <laughs> you yeah. know, this is like so insidious because you can't see it or smell it. And I always think, gosh, wouldn't it be interesting if you were in a place like an airport or a stadium or a coffee house or a restaurant or, and you could make all that visible, I think we would probably be surprised to see just how much of this energy, these signals and frequencies are kind of zooming around us at the speed of light all the time. You know, we don't get a lot of a break from it. And so one of our goals is to help people figure out how can they give themselves a little bit more of a break so that your body has time to kind of recoup, rest, and especially at night, and especially when you're sleeping, when your body's doing all that really important regenerative work, you want to have as clean an EMF environment as you can. And so we recommend creating kind of an EMF clean sleep sanctuary. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, Kim and I met at a gathering of a friend and we were talking about that example of how if you if we could see like, you know, maybe anyone out there that can create a virtual reality where you can just see all this stuff. And we're like, yeah, there goes an email. There goes a text. You know, like we were like making jokes at the party of like what we actually would see in the air and in our vicinity if these emfs were 
seeable just like you know there's lots of there are other pollutions like that too like fracking or mm. yeah air pollution but the emf one <laughs> is you know becoming more and more popular so the episode isn't quite over yet listeners or youtubers if you haven't given us a like subscribed left us a review or commented on any platform we would really appreciate you showing us some love here at the magical holistic healing arts remember kangen water and our grab bag for the podcast. Thanks so much for listening and stay vibrant out there.